Okay, so this was, this is a story about spear fishing on the island of Maui. Uh, I have another story about fish, spear fishing on the island of Maui that you may have heard already. It's different. This is completely different. You can see these stories on my website, salty101.com. I have a list of stories. If you hit the fishing link at the top of the website uh, and then scroll down the page and you'll see fishing stories. You can read it there or listen to uh, the stories here on this playlist on YouTube. So here it is. Scary spearfishing in Maui. From late 2002 to 2004, I lived on the island of Maui. A small beach, well the entire coastline is beach really, was only a 30 second walk from my front door. I bought a Hawaiian three prong, three piece sectional spear some good fins and I was in the water almost daily looking around for fish to spear and eat. Fishing food is ridiculously expensive on Maui on any Hawaiian island and it seemed like a good idea to save 40 to 80 dollars a month by finding our own fish by spear fishing. This was a shallow area. I had to swim out 100 yards to reach 15 foot depths so I usually stayed in 10 feet or so. I had been fishing at night off some of the cliffs on the west side of the island, out past Kahana, and I was always buying my bait. I was after some GT, giant trevally, or Yulua as they're called in the islands. One of the best baits to use for a Yulua is eel. They love it. I was set on catching a big Yulua, and I knew I needed to spear one of these moray eels I saw while spear fishing before. I had never speared an eel before. I'd never seen someone do it either, but that was my target for this early morning session as I walked down the hill to the beach around 7.30 a.m. I sat on the same rock I always did and looked out onto the flat Pacific Ocean. This area was ideal for snorkeling and spearfishing because the visibility was usually close to 100 feet and I had never seen a shark in the area even after I had speared a couple of fish. The water was bathtub warm as always. I scanned for jellyfish and I didn't see any, so I headed out around 50 feet from the shoreline. This area has scattered rocks and no real reef until you get out further, so I usually just do a slow scan of the bottom and look for something that could be good to eat. Barracuda were fairly common, but no such luck on this lovely morning. I dove down to the bottom to check out some rocks and, and a fish I saw that was big enough to eat. I was down there for about a minute when I saw a huge shadow pass over me. I cringed against some rocks, just hoping like hell it wasn't a big tiger shark. Tiger sharks are the ones we need to be aware of in the islands, and I was pretty sure that the beast was so big it must have been one of those. My luck held, and I was relieved to see a big sea turtle come out from around the rocks. In a couple of more minutes, I saw a huge eel back into a hole in some rocks. His head was just sticking out of the hole. It was huge. It was like this, uh, looking straight on, you know. This was the biggest, thickest, longest eel I had ever seen during my sessions. I floated around on the top and tried to figure out what to do. On Oahu, there are a lot of spearfishers, and I could have asked someone how to go about it. Internet was in its infancy during this time, so I couldn't get good instructions on how to spear an eel. I didn't know anything about eels. Would it fight once, it's, once I speared it? Would it try to bite? The three-pronged spear I used was good for fish, but for a four-foot-long eel as thick as my lower leg? Now I wasn't so sure. I took a full five minutes floating on the top to convince myself to try to spear the massive eel. This was unknown territory for me. Though I'd seen many of them, I'd always just admired them from a distance. The plan I decided on was to go straight for a kill shot by hovering over his head and getting the spear as close as possible before letting it go. I had also thought about not using the sling, the rubber tubing that shoots the spear. I thought maybe stabbing at it would be better. Then I thought that the arm motion would alert the eel that the danger was coming and so I went back to the tubing idea. The tubing was very strong and could sling the spear at great force. I was probably best to sling it. The unknown part was what happened after I speared him in the head. Would it be a kill shot? That would be ideal. 
Unfortunately, the prongs were spread out a bit far and I was coming down from the top. So like three prongs like this, coming down from the top to hit his head, right? The profile I could see of his head then was far thinner than from the side. From the side, the eel's head is large and an easier target. From the top, it's quite thin. I saw this as I got down there and I was about three foot above him. He didn't move. He definitely saw me there, but he just watched. I had already pulled back the spear, so you pull it back, and the, the band is here in the crease of your, of your hand, and, and you stretch the spear back, the, spear, the rubber tube is attached to the end of the spear, and then you keep cranking it back and then grab the spear to hold, and then there's a, a tension, and when you let go like this, the spear slings, right? Uh, I pointed the tip toward the eel and tried to be as precise as possible, figuring he'd move sometime when I let the spear rip, so I figured I'd better just try to shoot at the middle of his neck, that way I'd probably hit something. I had one more moment of indecision before I let the spear go. The feeling was exactly like the feeling as you were lighting the fuse of a large firecracker. Something like a quarter stick of dynamite or M80 or something. Something powerful. You think you know what's going to happen, or you hope you know. You don't really know, though. There's some real apprehension, but you do it anyway because you figured you've prepared as well as you can. You let it go. You light the fuse. I released the grip on the spear, and the force of it jammed, jammed it at the eel's head just 20-some inches away from the, from the razor-sharp prong. So I started about here, and it only had this far to go, right? When it went... It went like this. I heard the clunk as the spear hit the rocks beside it, and I couldn't believe what I saw. All three prongs of my spear had gone perfectly around the head and didn't hit the eel at all. So the eel's head was, was uh, safe in the gap of the, of the prongs. The eel was very quickly up in my face and coming at me like this, like huge tail whipping around and coming at me, right? as I thrashed around and tried to get my spear between me and this toothy beast. How in the hell do you go backwards in the water when you're facing the wrong way? I quickly expelled all the air in my lungs and backpedaled with my hands and feet for a few seconds like this, like, ah. I could see the head of the eel right in front of my face and I was sure he's just going to grab my face. His, his head was like here. After just a couple seconds, the big eel turned to my right and went off fast into some rocks where it could hide. Holy shit. I never tried to spear an eel that big again after that. I easily lost a year off my life in fear that morning. Later in Thailand, while giving a snake tour, I noticed a guy had a funny thumb. He must have sensed me looking at it. He showed me that it was actually his toe where his thumb should be. He was a diving instructor on the island of Phuket in Thailand. He somehow put his finger too close to a hole in the reef and that more and a moray eel took his entire thumb off in one quick bite. Eels are scary. Anyway, I don't snorkel in Florida. I, th I think there are too many sharks. I do bodyboard and surf though. All right, so that's the end of that story. And I think I might have only one more. Let's see. Girlfriend. Yeah, I have one more uh, story. This one is Dave's first fishing trip ever. And uh, it's kind of interesting. It's not, it's not a scary one. It's not a life or death one. Uh, it's just about somebody's, my friend's, a tech guy, you know, a programmer, his first uh, fishing trip with me on kayaks. So it's kind of cool. All right, so that's next. Hope you enjoy these. Cheers.